Hello, my name is Tom Stapleton from the Wakefield Community Access Television Station, and we're going to be talking about the Woven to Wakefield Line Project from National Grid. But before we get into the questions, I'd like to have people introduce themselves. So I'll start to my right for Dave, if you, if you could continue with that, David. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Clinch. I'm from Epsilon Associates in Maynard, Massachusetts. I'm supporting National Grid in this project by providing licensing, environmental permitting, and compliance and oversight services. My name is uh, Yad al Sabai. I'm an underground transmission engineer uh, with National Grid. My name is Richard Jones. I'm the project manager working for National Grid along with Benoit Kurohinko. My name is Danielle Oretz, and I work for National Grid. I am the lead stakeholder specialist for this project. Hello, uh, I am Brendan Murray, and I am the outreach coordinator for National Grid in Wakefield. Well, thank you for introducing yourself, everyone. And um, what I'd like to do is have this first question answered. That's the project overview, and Dick will take this question. And the question is, National Grid has been planning this Woven to Wakefield line project for a number of years now. Can you give our viewers an idea of what this project will accomplish once completed? Tom, you're right. Our team has been working with town officials and state officials and other local stakeholders for years in the planning of the Woburn to Wakefield line project. As you may know, this project is part of a suite of electric transmission cable projects called the Greater Boston Solution, GBS for short. GBS is a collaborative effort on behalf of both National Grid and Eversource. In response to ISO New England's 2008 study that identified inadequate transmission resources to serve the Greater Boston area, the purpose for this cable was identified. National Grid is responsible for the new transmission cable in the town of Wakefield. In the towns of Woburn, Winchester, and Stoneham, Eversource has a responsibility to install the cable. The goal of this project is to provide a more reliable transmission grid in the greater Boston area that will allow us to continue to deliver electricity to homes, businesses, and other uh, folks in the region. We'll do this by connecting the National Grid substation at Wakefield with the Eversource substation in Woburn via an underground cable. In towns like Wakefield, that means we'll have a better ability to deliver electricity to our community partners like the Wakefield Municipal Gas and Light Department. Well, thank you, Dick. Um, what is the timeline for this project? Tom, we expect to begin manhole installations in the September timeframe. That will continue through much of the fall. We'll also be doing two installations of uh, conduit on Salem Street near Nebulous Road and another in a parking lot off of Broadway that will traverse under the MBTA commuter rail. Then we'll provide more detail on the schedule as the work progresses. Um, well, okay, thank you. And uh, what are the hours of construction for this project? The agreement with the town is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Monday through Saturday on most sections of the project. However, there are some areas along the route which may call for work outside of those hours. We'll have more information regarding the work schedules in, the, in those areas in the coming weeks. Well, thank you very much, Dick. Um, the next question is to Iad, and it's about the duck bank and manhole system. And the question is, what are the other benefits of the project? Definitely. There are three major steps of construction when we build the duct bank and manhole systems. In Wakefield, the first step would be installing the manholes. We'll be installing 12 manholes approximately every 1,500 feet along the project route. In order to install these manholes, a contractor will open a large excavation, install shoring, and, and, and insert the manholes. 
The second step would be constructing the constructing the duct bank that house the transmission cables. In order to install the duct bank, a contractor will dig a trench that is three feet wide and six feet deep. Then the contractor will carefully place the conduits and pour concrete. Once that process is complete, the contractor will backfill the trench and place a temporary pavement. Curb-to-curb -curb restoration will take place once the circuits are energized. The third step in the process would be installing the cables. Cable installation will be the least impactful process to the public from the beginning of project execution. Installing the cables entails placing two cable trucks at consecutive manholes. The first cable truck will feed in the cable to the duct bank and the second cable truck will, will pull the cables towards the following manhole. Then the contractor will splice the cables from inside the manholes. Thank you, Yad. Uh, this question is to Dick and uh, Dick, uh, where should our viewers expect to see construction in Wakefield? Tom, that's a good question. Starting with the Stoneham line, the route starts along Albion Street before continuing on to Broadway. Then it goes on to an MBTA right-of-way. This is an unused right-of-way that uh, we're employing as part of the project. Then it goes to Salem Street, to Montrose Avenue, and then up the driveway into the National Grid Wakefield substation. The project route is about 3.7 miles, but only 2.7 miles are actually in the public roadway. By utilizing the unused NBTA right-of-way between Main Street and Salem Street, we were able to reduce the amount of in-street excavations that would have been required to complete the project. We also plan to leave the right-of-way in an improved condition with a paved maintenance road so that the town can complete their plans for a multi-use recreational path or rail to trail. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, this question is uh, to our outreach team. How can our viewers who live on or adjacent to the route stay up to date with the latest project information? Sure, I'll take that. In. Uh, again, my name is Brendan, and I am the outreach coordinator. Uh, one of the ways to be able to do so is to go on to our website. We will have a newsletter that will be updated every Monday with fresh information weekly. That website is www.ma.nhsolution.com. Throughout the process, uh, I will be uh, going around to the community and making sure that everyone understands the process as best as possible. Uh, if any questions come arise during the process, please give me a call at our number of 844-646-8427. That will go to my direct cell phone, and if I can't answer that right away, I will be able to give you a call back as soon as uh, I'm done what I'm doing right th at that point. Uh, we want to make sure that it's as easy as possible for everyone to get as much information as they can. So please make sure that you sign up for that newsletter. Thank you very much. Um, another question here is to our out outreach team, uh, mitigating construction impacts. And the question is, will there be road closures associated with construction from this project? So I can take that. There may, or um, at this point, there may be some road closures. We've been working very closely with the Wakefield uh, police and fire chiefs to come up with a traffic mitigation plan. If there should be any road closures, there will be signage. You can also, like Brendan mentioned, uh, stay up to date with the newsletter where we'll be having information like that posted as well. We, we also are going to try to do a rapid response so that um, if uh, I'm in the neighborhood and uh, we find out about the road closure as soon as we can, we'll be going out to the community and reaching out to each individual uh, that's on the roadway. Very good. Again, uh, my next question is also to the outreach team. If I live on the project route, will I be able to leave my house? Yes. 
That's the quick answer. Um, our construction crews will obviously be very aware of where we have driveways um, and excavation going on. So they will work with uh, the homeowner to make sure that you can get in and out of your driveway as, uh, as quickly as possible and try not to impede that for you. Very good. Another outreach question. What about businesses along the route? Will they be able to maintain access for customers and so on? Sure, I can take that. Uh, I've been working with the businesses throughout the community to find out when their busy seasons are uh, and to make sure that they're in contact with our project. Uh, and we've been working with them to make sure that we're not impacting their businesses as least as possible. Uh, they do understand in the first part of the process there won't be as much impact, uh, but throughout the entire process, we're keeping a close connect a connection with them so that we can make sure that they feel at ease with the process. Very good. Very good. And one more question for the outreach team. Will residential or business electric service be interrupted? No. As a part of this project, this is transmission work, not your distribution work, which is what feeds your homes and businesses. Uh, so there are no uh, interruptions to the electricity that's coming to your homes and businesses. This is all transmission, so it's the big stuff, super highway, but mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about that. Well, thank you very much for that question, and I'm sure a lot of people will be happy to hear that. Now, our next question is to Dave, and the question is, what other protections are in place to mitigate the impact of construction? So, thanks for asking. National Grid takes protection of the environment very seriously on all their projects. And this project has been in planning for some time, as Dick Jones mentioned. Um, protection of the environment comes through two fundamental forms, physical protection and behavioral protection. When I say physical protection, I mean those things you actually may see on the route, sedimentation and erosion control, blankets and fibers and fabrics that are used to prevent soil loss, erosion or runoff, and to ensure that no water that may be contaminated by sediment would enter a wetland or a stream. You might also see street sweepers to make sure that debris that's spread on the roadway is quickly removed. You may see water trucks to prevent dust. Um, there are a variety of features like that, those physical protective features and barriers that will be installed throughout the route and that you should see during the entire construction process. Perhaps more importantly, from a protection perspective, the actual folks that you have out on the route who serve an inspection and compliance observation process are the what we call the front line of folks who are there watching the construction every day and ensuring that all of the po policies and procedures National Grid has put into place are being followed. But also, it needs to be known that Mass DEP and the Energy Facility Siting Board, the Wakefield Conservation Commission, among others, have given all the permits required to build this project and that each of those permits has specific requirements, including reporting requirements, monitoring and observation requirements, and implementation of some of those physical controls that I mentioned earlier. Um, those monitors and inspectors will be on the job throughout the entirety of the project from beginning to end. And as the outreach folks have mentioned, there are methods, uh, website and phone numbers that you could call if one were to see something uh, that they had a question about relative to environmental protection and protection of not just the natural environment, but also that human environment. Well, thank you, Dave, very much for that information. And that uh, pretty much answers most of the questions we have. But we would like to have Danielle close out and give us uh, our final information about the whole process. Thank you very much, first offly, uh, firstly to the Wakefield Cable TV channel for having us here, as well as to the Wakefield community. We are um, committed to having an open dialogue throughout this whole process with the residents and businesses in Wakefield. Um, and if you, please, if you have any questions, if we haven't answered something or uh, you have a specific question for you uh, regarding this project, please feel free to reach out to us again um, via the hotline, our email address. Um, please sign up for the newsletter. There'll be great information on there. And again, we are uh, looking forward to continuing our relationship with you. Thank you.